traffic intersections and onto a straight piece of road where we can try these bars out in this Baby, are you fussing to me? You want to go ride in the, in the bike too? Huh? You want to go swim? Guys, we're here in York, Pennsylvania today, just about three minutes away from the famous Barbell Company, Barbell Weight Company, and uh, here at an undisclosed secret race location. Say hi, George. Hi. What we're going to do to George's Ninja 250 that I built. When did I build this one? 2016? 15. I built this bike in 15, raced it in 16, and now it's George's bike. And uh, what we're going to do today, ladies and gentlemen, is a compression test. And the reason we're doing a compression test is to make sure that the condition of the engine hasn't deteriorated over the course of the race season. Um, there's a lot of cold starts, and we run this thing without a filter. It's a full superbike engine. This is a Ninja 250. That still displaces 250. It's not one of my stroke 300s. It's an actual Ninja 250 with stock cams putting out 39 horsepower, guys. 39 horsepower on this bike is what it dynoed at when I built it. So, to make sure that going into the 2019 race season, uh, it still has all of its compression, we're going to do a compression test today. Um, if, it, if it doesn't have all of its compression, we're going to have to pull it down check the condition of the valves, do a leak down test, make sure they're sealing, do um, you know some piston and ring work, possibly a bore. Um, but yeah, guys, compression test time. First step in any compression test is to warm it up. Why do you need to warm it up? You need to warm it up because you want to have the rings sealing against the cylinder walls in the way that the bike is going to run. When the piston is small, and the walls are cold and the rings aren't running the you know stroking the way they would when it's running you're not going to get a, get an accurate reading you want a large expanded tight piston to do a compression test evaluation so we're going to warm it up we got the battery on the tender to keep the battery fresh while we're turning the engine over uh, what i'm going to do now is go ahead and get the tank off of it get the spark plugs out of it and go ahead and get it ready to hook the compression tester up all right, guys, now the trick to doing this is you want to hurry up and get these plugs out after you run it when the engine's warm. You don't want the engine cooling back off. It's such a small displacement engine, and it's December here. It's Christmas time in York, PA, so it's cool outside. Now, you got to have the right adapter on your tool for the size spark plug that you have. So that's the right adapter. And be careful you don't lose this down in the head, guys. Okay, we got the right adapter on there. Always use the proper size wrench. Never, ever, ever use pliers. <laughs> don't ever do it. It scratches up your tools. If you use pliers, I'm going to come to your house and spank you. Don't do it. Okay, so you got the right size adapter on there. When you thread this down in there, guys, you gotta keep it straight. You don't wanna cross thread that like that. See how it's doing at an angle? You gotta hold that straight and turn it like that so it feeds in correctly. You do not wanna cause cylinder head damage because you don't know how to use your tools correctly, all right? Okay. Turn it in very gently just till it seats. Doesn't have to be in very tight. Just a gentle seat like that will do. Now we want a full throttle for this, guys. Wide open throttle. The bike obviously can't run without spark plugs. You want a wide open throttle. Yeah, your engine turns over without this switch. I wired some of the elements differently with the relays, but Okay, so this starter works with the ignition off. That's perfect. Wide open throttle. The reason get, get a shot. Get, get, get. The reason you want a wide open throttle is you want maximum amount of air to be available to that engine. Come back up here. And we'll see what kind of compression we get. So it went to 130 and stopped. Okay. 
And now let's go to the other one and see if we get a big difference. You just don't want one to be, you know, 30 or 40 pounds higher than the other. See, that one went to 160. Let's go back to the first one. Stop to get them out. All right, here we go. One more time. See what we got. Yep, it's only going to 130. So what we have on this engine, guys, is we have one cylinder going to 130, the other one going to 160. So now what we got to do is find out why. Okay, guys, we went ahead and warmed it up some more. We uh, we put the uh, compression tester in both holes. We got 130 and 160. I'm not happy with that. Um, 130, 138, you know, 150, 152, okay. But 130 and 160, it's far enough apart that I didn't like that. Um, I really didn't like that. So we heated it up some more. We ran it a little bit longer. The thing's been sitting about two months since its last race outing. So I just want to make sure there's no debris or dirt or carbon built up on the valves um, causing a problem on the uh, engine valves to where it wouldn't seal properly. And we got it good and hot, to, and hot enough to, for the thermostat to open to make sure the pistons were fully expanded. And we're just trying to give it a second shot at, a, at another test to see what we get. You know, hopefully, hopefully it'll go, you know, 160, 150 instead of 160, 130. You know, I'd be okay with that. Okay, guys, let's see what we get. Full throttle, no ignition, no spark. It's not going to run away on us. Oh, yeah. Much, much better. Much, much better. We got up to 150 on that left hole this time. Let's see what our right hole goes to. If the right one's still at 160 or 165, I'm okay with that. If the right one jumped up over 170, 175, and the left one stayed down at 150, then I'm still concerned. So let's see what we got. Now look guys, I've built some of these with high compression strokers and put 300 cranks in them. Put 300 cranks, turn the camera, put 300, straight. Put 300 cranks in the Ninja 250s and got a uh, compression test of, well, I don't want to publish it. <laughs> Let's say more than 195 pounds um, out of some of those motors. But this one wasn't built to that level of aggression. Okay, let's see what we get. Yeah, okay. So one's at 150, one's at 160. I'm much, much, much happier with that, guys. I'm much happier with that. What that's telling me is one side of the engine just wasn't hot all the way, and now both sides of the engine are hot, and both of the valves, uh, were all eight of the valves are sealing correctly. Whatever carbon was in there is blown through. Those valves are getting a full seat into the head. The pistons are fully expanded out, and the rings are dragging the walls, and we got a good seal. So uh, I'm going to call this a success. And I'm going to go ahead and recommend to George that he race this engine another year. And then, uh, you know, next winter, if it starts dropping down under 145 pounds in each cylinder, well, then we'll do another teardown. Okay? All right, guys. Thanks a lot. This is Cycle for Life, Quentin and George. And uh, a bike that's very near and dear to my heart. This is the first Ninja 250 that I ever got under a 1 minute 30 lap time at Summit Point. We later got the 300 stroker crank down in the 27s, but this is the one that started it all, guys. This is the one that started it all three years ago. So thank God for that and for our safety, and here's to another good 2019 race season.